Billionaire's Secret to Wealth in Gold and Silver. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the holdings of billionaire precious metals investor, Eric Sprott. But before we get to what stocks Eric Sprott holds, uh, let's just have a look at a few charts first. So arguably, and this comes from Katusa Research, Marin Katusa, uh, this is probably the most important chart in the world right now. Uh, if this is the beginning of a violent move upwards, commodities are about to get very expensive and commodities have performed very well in the last 18 months. Um, and, you know, even with gold, you might be thinking, well, you know, gold feels pretty high already as it's, you know, pushed towards its all time high. Uh, but by all metrics, gold remains at historic lows and silver even more so. And when you measure that on, a wide range of metrics, they are extremely low, especially when compared to the S&P 500. So the gold market has always moved in cycles from booms to busts and more so in silver. And once again, eventually back again. So far in this boom, gold has barely risen 20% from its floor. Uh, that's not even... That's not even close to the minimum required to qualify for a true bull market over the past century. So uh, the smallest gold run-ups run in the past uh, 90 years was 45%. That's the smallest. So gold has barely risen 20%, yet the smallest gold run-up in the past 90 years was 45%. So more than twice the current uh, gain. Uh, however, every other rally was far bigger uh, from 72 to 74. You guys know the rally exceeded 100%. 78 to 80, another 100%. 2007 to 2010, we'll have a look at that in a sec. A 67% increase in the price of gold. And well, just look at this chart. That's where we are. So yeah, I'm very bullish moving forward. And as you guys know, I think we're going to, see an inflationary decade ahead because of a whole heap of reasons, both from uh, a monetary point of view, but also because of what's happening in the energy sector. And I've shared many charts showing the correlation between CPI and oil. And uh, I won't go into the ESG thing in this video, but you guys get the drift. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit more shortly about my own positions in, in the gold and mining, uh, gold and silver mining sector. So with the, with this chart, I, I would also uh, get you guys to think about as the stock market crashes, uh, as the S and P crashes, and I think it will. And I'll talk more about my own portfolio in a second. Um. I believe we'll see a number of mining companies uh, in the S&P 500 increase. So this is metals and mining index weight in the S&P 500. And you can see this is all-time lows. You know, the last five years, it's been the all-time lows. And I believe as a lot of these growth stocks really fall off the cliff, and I think they're going to, I mean, they already have shown that they are, we're going to see gold mining stocks in particular and other metals start to increase in that s p 500 which means an increase in the flow of capital into the sector because of the way people uh, invest in etfs and whatnot um one thing to note at the end of uh at the end of the cold war okay there were 20 mining companies in the s p 500 guess how many there are today two and so we've seen uh, fund flows going into paper gold. So we've seen a lot of funds moving into uh, you know, ETFs for gold. But we haven't seen that capital move into the gold mining space or the precious metals mining space. And uh, a lot of uh, newer investors in the 
precious metals mining space have been very frustrated. Um, but as Rick Rule says, when you know these pressure, precious metals mining investments as a percentage of people's uh, portfolio simply goes back to mean, then we're going to see a three to five times increase in capital flows into the mining sector. And that's just going back to mean. If we get a boom, if we attract even more capital, the flows uh, can be quite uh, staggering. All right, so let's have a look at Eric Sprott's holdings. So I'll leave this up here and I'll let you guys have a look at this. So you, one thing you will notice is that Eric Sprott invests around the world. Um, I will highlight some of the stocks that I own that uh, that Eric owns. So you can see uh, Adriatic Metals. That's one that is in my portfolio. Uh, Kirkland Lake. Um, I'll probably miss one or two here or there. Um, yeah, but have a look there. See if you guys own any any of those stocks. So some more, uh, DeGray Mining, uh, that's one I've got. Evolution Mining, that's one i got. Actually, I'll say it now, I don't usually kind of, and I don't give financial advice, guys, but Evolution Mining is one that I own and one that I trade options on. I sell options, I sell naked puts and cover calls on my Evolution Mining shares. Uh, First Majestic, uh, Fosterville, um, what else we got here? Ah, Minotaur. Minotaur, got that. Pack Gold. Uh, Pack Gold, you guys know. Is that Pack Gold? No. That's not Pack Gold. And Romelius. Uh, that's one that, that I've got. What else we got here? Ah, West Gold. West Gold Resources. I actually saw that company at a mining conference a couple of years ago. Was it two years ago? I can't even remember the time now, but fairly recently. And uh, I was quite impressed and I got into that uh, not long after that conference and that's certainly performed quite well. So anyway, there's uh, Eric Sprott's holding. So are you guys holding uh, many of these stocks in your portfolio? Uh, as you can see, Eric holds a lot of stocks in, you know, in the mining space and, and he invests all around the world. You know, he doesn't just invest in Canada or just in the U S uh, he invests all around the world and uh, really probably the best, uh, mining investor there is. So why invest in gold and silver miners? You know, why not just buy the physical? Well, I do own the physical. I, know, I own a lot of the physical. Um, but I love investing in gold and silver miners and other commodity players as well because you get leverage. You get huge leverage. And uh, you, know, you can go back to, I've shared these charts before. Go back and have a look at May 03 to March 08. And uh, once again, if you bought the right gold stocks, um, they well outperformed the uh, underlying metal. And silver even more so. You know, if, you, if you invest in the right companies, and look, it's not easy investing in the uh, mining sector and even harder in the exploration st sector. You know, very hard. But you get it right and the rewards are there. And then that November 08 to April 11 period. So really that whole, you know, from 2003 uh, onwards has just been fantastic. Well, up until, you know, 2011. And once again, silver uh, does even better than, than gold uh, on, a, on a percentage basis. So, you know, this is why I like investing in the mining uh, and exploration sectors. Now, I did a presentation back in 2020 uh, and 
yeah, so Saracen. So I, I literally just took this uh, slide from a presentation that I did. Obviously, Saracen uh, uh, has merged and you, know, you can no longer buy Saracen itself. But at the time, uh, I shared this Saracen in June 2013 was trading at eight cents. And back in, I think it was June 2020 when I did the presentation, uh, Saracen was trading at $5.96. So a $10,000 investment in 2013 with a seven year wait turns into $745,000. So that's the power of you know investing in you know, mining and exploration stocks, especially exploration stocks, but there's a lot more risk in that. And so you need to know what you're doing and you need to be able to reduce your risk in that, that space. But you get it right and you know the benefits are there. And Northern Star, so this was from the same presentation. Uh, Northern Star in July to, uh, 2010 was trading at five cents. And uh, when I did that presentation, it was trading at 14.75 and its all-time high uh, was 15.28 in June 2020. Um, so a $10,000 investment in 2010, 10 years later, would be 2.95 million. And so this is why I like it. And I think people should have a percentage of their portfolio in this sector because the gains, the leverage on the underlying metal can be can be life changing. And so people ask me, Steve, you know, do you invest in crypto? Do you do this and that? Well, I have my own thoughts on on cryptos and you know, I see a lot of risk in different areas and moving forward. I, I prefer to speculate in this space. And I've shared before one of one of my examples. Uh, Chalice was trading uh, early 2020 at 17 cents. Um, at the time when I shared this, uh, it was trading at nine dollars and six cents. I think it's uh, I think it's in the five dollar mark now. Uh, with an all-time high of ten dollars and forty-eight in November 2021, uh, ten thousand dollar investment in 2020. So you know, eighteen months later, would be five hundred thirty-two thousand um, dollars, or six hundred sixteen thousand at its all-time high. Uh, and I did invest in this one. So my ten thousand dollar investment turned into two hundred fifty-four thousand when I sold it at four dollars thirty-three. So, you know, that was a fantastic return. So I much prefer speculating in the, you know, with a part of, portion of my portfolio in the exploration uh, sector. Now, even when there are stock market crashes, uh, the gold mining sector can do very well. And, you know, I know you guys know about Homestake Mines, which gained 600% while the Dow fell. You know, two thirds. Um, you know, and same thing with uh, the nineteen seventies. You know, when the stock market crashed during the nineteen seventies, uh, both in nominal terms, uh, in parts of the nineteen seventies, and in real terms throughout the whole nineteen seventies. You know, the gold silver miners did exceptionally well, or mo the majority of them did exceptionally well. And I see something happening uh, there again. Now, I want to highlight two videos that I've done on this channel uh, that are two of my favorite videos. I, in fact, I, I, you know, I put out a lot of different content. Some videos uh, I really like and I think I provide really valuable content. In other videos, it's more just me sharing the news, what's the latest you know, happening. Um, Crisis Investing Gold and Silver. Uh, talked about Doug Casey's book, uh, crisis investing, which had a big, big impact on my life as an investor, especially in the gold and silver uh, sector. And so I shared a lot of gold nuggets from that book and what I learned from that book. And uh, so, yeah, I if you're interested in investing in gold and silver miners and explorers and you haven't watched this video, put a link in the description. You have to watch it. And then you've got to go try to find uh, Doug's book and buy it. Uh, you really want to get uh, educated before investing, especially in the uh, exploration sector.
And another book that I, oh, sorry, video that I did that I highly recommend. Uh, and it was one of my very early videos that I did when I started this channel, Investing in Gold, Silver Miners and Explorers. And in this video, I talked about uh, how I value gold and silver miners and explorers and uh, the things that I look for. And so once again, it's just an education video. I was just trying to educate you guys on on you know what I look for in gold and silver miners and and explorers and you know maybe you guys can learn a thing or two and you know talking about how to read drilling results and stuff like that. So once again, if you're interested in investing in this sector and you're not you know you, you, you're not sure what to do, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Watch it before you go and put your money in this sector because there is a lot more risk in this sector than simply going out and just buying the physical gold and silver. In fact, there's I'd argue there's no risk. There's no counterparty risk. When you hold that precious metal uh, in your possession, That's uh, there's no counterparty risk. All right, so let me give you guys an update on my portfolio. So I had to share this one. I had to get this one into a video. That's Brent Johnson from Santiago Capital. Mr. Dollar Milkshake, theory man himself. I don't know who did this, but it was it was pretty funny. And Brent shared it himself. Um, so, yep, you've seen the dollar. Uh, rising and strengthening. We've seen the Aussie dollar now break below 70 US cents, uh, which, you know, if it continues to lower, it's going to in increase inflationary pressures for us Aussies. Um, as you guys know, I hold US dollars as a percentage of my portfolio. And I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys over the last month or two, uh, I have been taking profits off the table. Uh, in my uh, mining stocks or in my share portfolio. I've been taking profits off the table. I haven't sold 100% of any of my positions, but I've sold off uh, quite a lot uh, and taken those profits off. And I've been building cash. Now, I uh, have shared this. Uh, in fact, with my turtles, my students, I, I share with them every time I'm making a trade, buying or selling. I tell them I'm selling X, Y, Z, and this is why. And that's just a small group we've got of, you know, well, I call them my turtles. And for those of you, you can try to work out why I call them turtles. Uh, I, I share with them. So over the last uh, month or two, I've been sharing that I've been selling, you know, X, Y, Z stock and taking profits, building cash, because we believe that we're going to see uh, a market crash. I've been arguing for it for quite some time, a 1973-74 style event where we see asset prices and stocks and even real estate, bonds, uh, fall 50% nominal terms. Now, I'm not saying housing will fall 50% nominal terms. I've got no idea. In fact, I've got no idea what stocks will fall as well, but they are going to fall. And that means that both gold, silver, other commodity mining stocks that have performed well are going to fall initially as well. And so I took some of those profits off the, off the table and that's actually worked out well because a lot of those stocks that I sold and took profits off the table have already fallen about 30 to 50%. And uh, I'm actually uh, going to see one of, my, uh, one of my students this afternoon and uh, I'll be sharing with, with him that I'm starting to accumulate some of these stocks back again. Uh, but we have uh, already put some of this cash to work where we've actually uh, shorted the market. So we've actually started to short the market in a small way. We've, we, we haven't gone all in. And uh, so that's a bit of an update on my portfolio at this point. But don't worry, precious metals investors, I haven't deserted you. No, no. Uh, remember John Exter, the most honest central banker ever that created the Exter's Pyramid. And when a monetary or banking or confidence crisis erupts, there's a flight to safety by scrambling of electronic currency, bad currency, to M0 cash. And I think we're seeing that. We're seeing these geopolitical events happening. We're seeing a uh, lack of confidence uh, happening. We're seeing asset prices start to fall as rates rise. And we've seen a run to the US dollar. 
And Brent Johnson's dollar milkshake theory makes sense. And by the way, Brent Johnson is a gold bull. He loves gold. And the difference between he and Peter Schiff is Peter, they both agree on the end game. They both agree where this ends. Uh, you know, Brent just sees that there's a, a, a little, there's, there's a play that happens before the end game. And I think Peter actually agrees with that. But Peter says, why try to play that? When you know what the end game is, just just invest for the end game because we all know that's easy to to see, and just sit and wait because not everyone can do what Brent does, and uh, even Jim Rogers, one of my favourite all time investors, says that yes, there will be a run to the US dollar for safety uh, because people think it's a safe currency. Jim says, well, it's not, but people think that, so there will be a bull market in US dollars. Hence why I'm holding it as a percentage of my portfolio. Uh, and then uh, Jim actually says at that point he will sell that and then buy other real assets. And uh, you know, and, and, and then what happens is at a later stage, this scramble will continue into gold and silver. And so, yeah, in all of this, gold and silver, and I think we're seeing it, especially in silver. Uh, what are, what are we about? Eighteen straight days, nineteen straight days, sixteen straight days. I I don't I can't even remember now of silver going down. Uh, and so you know, and I've done videos before where I said this this is likely to happen in this event. Initially, gold and silver, especially silver, will come down as part of everything else. However, when that those capital flows. Uh, scramble into the real safe haven assets as John Exter has perfectly done it with his Exter's Pyramid here, uh, then we're going to see almighty gains in the physical gold and silver and then with the leverage gold and silver miners and explorers. So anyway, guys, what do you guys think? i uh, love to see your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, especially if you're holding uh, some of those stocks that uh, Eric Sprott holds. Um, yeah, feel free to share them down below. Once again, we don't give financial advice on this channel, uh, but we try to pre present the news. We we try to share education and, and I share what I'm doing. And uh, But that is not financial advice. Anyway, guys, uh, take care and I'll see you all again on another episode of Finance Uncut.